And this one, look, it closes lovely. Lovely. That's, <laughs> that's how it should work. <laughs> Today I'm gonna to show you how to fit an aluminium window, full process glass as well. Obviously your window might be slightly different to mine, but hopefully you'll pick up some hints and tips along the way. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe for interesting stuff like this. If you're a regular, why are you watching another window video for? Now I'm not a professional. I don't have a trade, I just have a go. But I have fitted one window and a half. So I'm pretty much a professional now. So I'm leaving that for now. I need to miss this one, miss this one. I can fit that one. So that's the one I'm gonna show you today. Before we get started, we might as well talk about can you actually install your own windows? Yes, you can. You don't necessarily need a Fenza registered installer. This is obviously in the UK. You can get a Fenza registered installer and that makes sure that you basically keep to the building regulations in terms of U values, fixing, security, etc. That's going to cost you a lot of money to get a Fenza registered installer, but that is an option. Next option is you fit it yourself and you get building control to basically check it and sign it off. That's going to cost a, a certain amount of money in terms of getting it checked. If you don't get either of them done, when you come to sell your house, the solicitor is going to ask you for either a Fenza certificate or a building control certificate. If you don't have either of them, then your option is you can either get a retrospective building inspection or you get a building control indemnity policy or you can get a Fenza indemnity policy as well. You can decide between one of them five options which one's going to be cheapest for you. I would say just off the top of my head, probably a Fenza um, indemnity policy is gonna be the cheapest. Don't quote me on that, do your own research. Obviously for me, I've got the whole building getting signed off by building control. I've said I'm installing my own windows. Do you want to know anything in particular? And they said, no, we'll just check it at the end. And they might poke their head round and just see whether I've got the right fixings and stuff. But I, I doubt they will because they know it's my house and they know that I'm gonna do it properly anyway. I'm not going to cut corners. I've got problems with these particular windows. Your builder or your window installer, they might just shove them in and not really give a fuck, but obviously I'm doing everything properly. Talking about the issues, there's another thing that you should consider if you're going to purchase your windows. Upon delivery, make sure that you check all your frames. I had to unwrap all of these with Lou's dad and check everything. That was for any damage, etc. Um, because this particular company, they said that I had to report any claims within 24 hours, otherwise it would be chargeable after that. I'm not sure this would be legally enforceable, but I did check everything. It took ages. There was some problems with the glass. I was missing back-to-back -back spaces. The company has since replaced that. That's fine. I do have other issues with the frames. Now I've fitted them, I've come to realize that the, the actual sashes don't line up on the hinges. Now that will be sorted with this particular company. They're going to work with me to get things proper. But just in case, you should be paying for this kind of thing on a credit card. If you pay on a credit card, you can claim under Section 75 directly against the lender. And that's if you've got any issues and the window company decided they're not actually going to deal with it, basically. That's what it comes down to. So it's almost like an insurance policy, if you like. Make sure your contract's under 30 grand. You need to pay over £100 on the, on the actual credit card. If the company that you're getting your windows from can't accept a card payment, don't trust them. It's not worth it. To get a card payment system, it will cost them like £20 a month. If they're not willing to do that, they're probably not a legitimate business that you really want to be dealing with. I've got a little bit of an issue on window one, a definite issue on two, a definite issue on three, a definite issue on four. Number five looks like it's going to be okay, and number six I've got an issue. So we're going to fit number five today. That's the only window that I can actually fit where I can go all the way through without having any problems. Fingers crossed though, hopefully I don't have any problems. The particular window I'm doing today is a French window. That means both open. It's got floating mullion in the middle as well. And for my frames, I've got thermal enhancement around the edge. So that means that I need to go for a direct fixing through the frame. I'm also going to use expanding foam tape around the perimeter and that negates the need to use expanding foam in a can as well as silicon, even though I wouldn't say that this is compatible with direct fixing. You should probably avoid it. But if you possibly can with your windows, if it's a deciding factor, 
try and get a frame where you can use fixing straps. I fitted my French doors the other day. I could use straps on these because it's got a different type of frame. And these, obviously that's not fixed yet. I've only done the top and bottom, but this makes it like a hundred times, million times easier. Bearing in mind, you should be setting your window back 30 mil into the cavity. So this brick finishes about here. So mine should be sitting about there, the window. That gives you better thermal qualities. So if you can imagine if it's overlapping the cavity, it makes it difficult to get a fixing in direct fix. Whereas if you add straps, it makes it a hundred times better. For mine, I'm using a light duty concrete screw from Screw Fix. These are easy drive. I'm going hundred mil. You need at least a 40 mil fixing into your brickwork. Uh, I end up with about a 60 mil on this. The actual, um, depending on the thickness, the length of your screws, these particular ones, you can go max fixture thickness is 70 mil. I know my frame's 40 mil, so I could use my 80 mil screws, but I like to get a proper fixing in. It depends on your frames. The only reason why I'm going for these, because the head's a little bit smaller, this is the ones they normally use for frame fixing. These are a bit more heavy duty, but they go up to medium duty. That's sufficient for just these small windows. That'd be fine. I did write down my process. You can slow it down if you want to read this. It's good to have an action plan together when you're actually going to do this. Now I know exactly what I'm doing. It just makes it a little bit easier if I check, if I need to check what the next stage is. You should check your opening first of all. Make sure that there's nothing like protruding. Nothing's going to cause you some problems. So I'm just going to knock these little snots out the uh, the lintel. Make sure there's nothing protruding. You see, for me that particular block that would cause an issue if I was getting the window in from the back. But I've learned that it's easier to go in from the front. It depends on obviously what your openings are like. And then you should also check the measurement of your actual window opening and the measurement of your windows to make sure they're gonna fit. I done that myself, I've I done my own survey. If you're interested in that video, how to measure up your windows, that's up here. Um, so yeah, I know everything's gonna fit, so I don't need to measure it, but I'm just gonna clean it up quickly and then I'll show you the next stage. For my particular frames, it's best for me to remove the sashes because that's where I need to get the fixings. It depends on your manufacturer though. That means removing three screws from the bottom, three screws from the top. Put them in a tub with a lid, don't knock it over. So we've got a frame separated. Then we've got our windowsill. Now my particular windowsills, they've already been cut to size. The end caps have been put on, but I had to put these in, what are called seal inserts, and that's to help screw and uh, support the actual frame on here because that's the drainage channel, it's deeper. It's a good idea to stick these in the day before. That's what I've done. I've marked exactly where I wanted them. They're siliconed in, uh, they're like bridge packers. If you have to do your ends caps as well, do them the day before as well, because otherwise everything's wet and it's gonna move. It's just a bit of aggro. Uh, this seal, I could actually put the straps on. So I have, they're like little brackets that they clip in and I've screwed it as well. It's quite easy at this point. So I actually mix up which way is top, which one's the bottom. You can tell that because you've got the actual drainage holes at the bottom of the seal, but get yourself a nice felt tip pen right on this, that's the top. Then you always know, just in case. I've already measured down exactly where I want these fixings so I can get them directly into a brick. So if you have a look here, I've got one fixing there, one fixing there, and one fixing at the top. So the, the stretcher brick rather than the one that's a header, because you can't tell at the back of the brick, depending on how it's been cut, if it's covered by your cavity closing, you might not be able to get a proper fixing in. I'm just going to mark on the frame exactly where I want to get my fixings. Uh, generally, from the corners, you would normally go anywhere between 100 and 200, and then you need other fixings down the frame, no more than 600 mil spacings in between. Uh, for my particular manufacturer, it has said to do um, 150 from the corners, but I've slightly adjusted that by say 20 mil, just so I can get it proper fixing in, in the actual um, brick itself. 
550. You've probably seen I've set up a little bit of a jig or a stand so I can hold this up whilst I drill it. It's easier when you're on your own basically instead of just like this going flopping everywhere. Right, so we're going to drill it and count the sink it now. So from marking on the outside, I'm going to use an automatic uh, centre punch, spring loaded. This is good. Let me get that in the centre. That just makes it easier when you're drilling. And then I'm going all the way through with a six mil bit for these particular screws because you want clearance on this. To make sure the head's not going to interfere, we're going to count the sink it as well. I'll just pre-drill all of them around the outside and then we can get cracking with fixing the seal. Seal time, so for this particular manufacturer, it recommends it's going through the seal inserts through the channel here. So I need to make some holes through here. I'm going to place the seal on top and then screw it in. Now for this particular seal, I'm also going to do two fixings there because I want to make sure that I get this frame really tight to this. I only use three seal fixings on this particular window, the first one that I've done. You probably won't see it, but there's an ever so slight gap just from here to here. So I don't want that to happen. I want it to be really tight. I will whack a bit of silicon in that gap. For this one, I've got no gap uh, because I do fire fixings now. If I don't do that, then obviously there's an issue with air getting in like a, obviously I'm going for air tightness, but obviously thermal abilities. And uh, any of you watch Gospel Handyman's uh, channel, Andy Mack, you know when he was doing the sound testing, he, he had um, less acoustic value at the bottom of his window. And I think maybe it might be to do with the way that his frame was joined to his actual seal. Um, it's easier to get the seal on the window first and then get it in if you possibly can, even if you have to go universal brackets get the brackets at the bottom on your sill. Uh, for my doors, I fit the sill first and then I do the actual frames. I'm gonna pile it with a three and a half mil drill bit and I've got 50 mil stainless steel screws for this particular application. You might, I've got loads of different sizes in these, but stainless steel is obviously the best way. I found that actually I should probably, if I put this one in first and I put a screw in, it holds it in place so it doesn't move when you drill in the rest. Now, whilst my frames have thermal enhancement around the sides, there's nothing at the bottom. And that's partly because of the drainage channel and obviously it needs a way to get the water out. But I think that I could improve on that. And this back edge, I can put more expanding foam tape to basically fill up that gap. Because aluminium windows, they're notorious for condensation issues on the inside, even though I'm gonna have a whole ventilation system. So I probably won't have a problem, but I just want to make it a little bit better. I do have more expanding foam tape. Unfortunately, this is already unwrapped, the last bit, and it's expanded to its full potential. <laughs> uh, it started off at 18 mil. Uh, this is a little bit hard to obviously get in and then push the window down. So I'm just going to trim this down and then I'll stick that on. I just, I've, I've cut it down to half the width. It will still compress. I just need to make sure I put it in the right place. On the very first window that I've done, I stuck it too far to the back. But you need a little gap for the to get the frame over. So I just go on the thermal brake. There shouldn't be any reason why there should be any water getting behind this anyway, because the drainage channel's on the frame there at the front. Now I'm going to put silicon down this back edge here, and then that's going to meet up with this watch out if your stickers obviously go too far down you'll have to peel your stickers back um, for the ends as well you'll notice that my end caps cover the drainage channel um, just because I didn't stick these end caps on I will put a little bit of silicon down there just to dam it up and then I'll put a little bit in here at the back afterwards but I'll show you that but I'll show you that in a minute the ceiling I'm using is Sudasil 215LM. This is from their SWS 
um, systems, that's uh, Sudo window systems. Sudo themselves, they're really good. If you contact them and ask them what you actually need for this particular application, they'll get back to you almost straight away because I needed a different seal, sealant for the bottom of my door um, glazing um, and they've given me the right one that I need to get. But this is good, this is like a hybrid sealant adhesive. It would be easier if this was already compressed, but these are the cards we've been dealt. Make sure you get some wipes. These are good. Screw fix. Product placement there. They should sponsor me, eh? Just make sure you get any sealant that you've squeezed out the back. So you can see my drainage channel is clear. The foam is there, but I've still got this gap here. There's no gap down the front edge there. So that's all properly closed out now. I've got all them fixings in. And because of that gap, I'm going to step stick some EPS foam in just there but before that I'm just gonna quickly put some more silicon down there just to dam it up and block it out and then I'll wipe that in because these corners are continuous it compresses there even though that's how the manufacturer says how to do it obviously you're losing that little gap of thermal value which makes the corners cold so I slice down the edge stick some silicon and then I've got some more of this foam that they use and then I just shove that in there and then that gives me a better corner. You're probably wondering, is it really worth it doing all them little bits of insulation and stuff? Oh, I think it is. These particular windows, they're gonna give me a U value overall of one uh, for triple glazed. The center pane on a triple glazed, I think it's 0.8 normally. So even though that thermal enhancement that might only be making 0.05 difference in terms of u value that enables them to advertise it on the send values at least this is a standard size window and door and stuff u value of one for triple glaze and 1.4 for double glazed and they're the kind of values that you need to be hitting on a new build um so yeah you could i could have potentially got away with double glaze but they offered me triple glaze it was a good price so that's what i went for i'm obviously trying to do the best that i possibly can if you can, when you do your fixings through the frame into your wall, you should use these. These are like U-shaped packers because you want support either side of the actual fixing. And ideally you'd have full support all the way across now because obviously these are, like there's just one bit there, one bit there, and then there's a gap that's filled with this. I can't use this because obviously you need to put my expanding foam tape around here so I, I won't use these, I just use a packer on the back edge, but that means I be careful when you fix this down because you can't distort your frame. It's expanding foam tape time, so we're just going to cut some down to length and then we can wrap it around the whole frame. If you do end up using expanding foam tape, make sure you clamp it afterwards, otherwise it's going to expand. The warmer it is, the quicker it's going to expand. This starts at 2mm, goes out to 12mm. I've got another one that goes from 3 to 18 This particular one's got an airtight seal on the back. This is roughly the same size as that frame. You don't need to do it as thick as the frame. I haven't done it as thick as the frame on the doors. It's sticky on one side. You take this white bit off, you stick it on the frame. So I'll just whack that round now. Okay, so that's all done. You need to pinch in the corners, so it expands into the corners. I've done this several, well, a couple of times now. I've not got right into the corners, so you need to put silicon in, and then diagonal cut it when you join it. Now, you might be wondering, what's what's that in your hand? When I done the top fixings through the steel, when the drill bit goes through this, it just balls it up and just like tears through it. So you need to make a hole. I've got this special hole punch tool. 
bought it off uh, Amazon. So I'm just gonna hole punch these top fixings and then I'll go around and I'll cut the spacings for the packers. So I've got the hole punch, spaces for packers all at the back. That's all the way around. And now we're ready to stick the window in. So now it's a case of, do we trust, or do I trust my own measurements? Of course I do. It's going to go straight in, isn't it? Oh, God. What you need to make sure is that the tape doesn't bunch up behind. Uh, I've got a tiny issue at the top there. That needs pushing back a bit, so I'll just grab the ladder. With that expanding foam tape, it gives it a little bit of a friction fit, um, so I don't need to worry about it falling out in the meantime. We're gonna get the air wedges in. These are really cheap. And then, uh, yeah, we can line everything up. With my air wedges, I go two at the bottom, one at the side, one at the side, one at the top. I made up this jig. It's got a bit of wood there. And that distance from there to there is roughly what I want it from this edge. That's gonna give me a 30 mil uh, drip edge on the sill. You should aim for 40 if you're doing it. And uh, it will give me roughly a 25 mil uh, or 20 mil overlap into the cavity. I can't do 30 because of the way that I need to fix it. So I can roughly get this in place. It just makes it easier than measuring it all of the time. Oh, I've just seen, I've got, like the expanding foam tape is rolled back there, so I need to go outside and poke it through. Just gonna put a couple of packers on the edge. I should have a gap that's roughly five mil all the way around. It might be slightly over. Uh, we'll pump this up a bit. So it's just a matter of lining it up. I've switched my Hupar laser level on. Obviously we need one of them bad boys, don't you? Um, it's a bit hard to see on the black, but I'm, I'm pretty much there. You know, obviously when you're almost there, but I fine tune it with your level. That's what I always do. Cause you can tell a little bit better. I mean, that is, that is bang on. Um, yeah. I think the gap at the top, it looks like I've got seven mil there if I leave five mil down here. So I'm gonna pack these bottom ones up a little bit more and then I'll just work my way around packing it. And then you do a little tiny adjustment in a minute. Okay, so it's level all the way through. I've got seven mil on the bottom, five mil at the top, six mil either side, packers all done. I've pumped my air wedges a tiny, tiny bit more. And now obviously I've checked with my jig. So I've got the right seal overhang. That's almost there. So on the sides now, I'm just gonna make sure it's plumb with the level and then you can just tap it across. I've double checked it for level and plumb. And then we're gonna start drilling from the top with the SDS drill bit. I only need a five mil bit for this. Check on your box, which size you need. Uh, I can't go through that straight away because I've got a metal lintel there. So I need to go through with the metal drill bit first in this. And it's good that I've, obviously I've pre-drilled the frame holes. So I know exactly where I need to go, which makes it easier kind of, oh, I was hanging in my pocket, shit. There you go. Oh, you start at the top, because when you put the silicon on the end of the screw, you don't want all the dust going on it. From If you just start at the bottom, you're gonna get loads of dust in it.
Okay, we've got impact driver with a torx bit. We'll get it most of the way in first. Silicon ram screw head, then sneak it up. When you actually do this up, don't do it so it bends the frame. So it almost it moved a tiny, tiny fraction. If it bows, you need to come back out. Right, I'm gonna just sort out the silicon round here. I'll give it a little quick wipe. And then I'll be back with you tomorrow. Reason being, you see the hole in the insulation over there. Uh, it's because I've got seconds, so there was a little bit of a gap and a blue tits decided to slip there in, during the evenings. And he's been flying, or he or she's been flying in and out checking whether I've finished, so I'll just leave it for now and then it can go to sleep. Now I'll take these air wedges out so the foam can expand overnight for tomorrow. I'll see you then. Morning, morning. Right, I just, I forgot to do the straps last night. So I just need to make the hole a little bit bigger and then we can go through with the SDS and then I'll go 80 mil screws into this. You see how much easier it is with straps. Um, right, I'm just gonna cut these. I've put little packers underneath this. When I go for the window board, obviously I'll route that bit out. Um, I'm not sure, can you get insulated window boards? I don't know, does anyone know? I'm just gonna cut these off. Okay, so I've done all my fixings. They was all done yesterday. I thought I'd just quickly show you, obviously on this. The manufacturer says, uh, I can either go through that bit there or that bit there, obviously that being the cavity. There are a lot of companies that actually um, say you can go through the thermal brake. That's the thermal brake there. UPVC, uh, you can go through pretty much anywhere. It doesn't really matter. But if you can imagine this frame is only 67 mil deep. I think 67 or 68 uh, so if you're setting it back into the cavity you, your only choice is pretty much through the front that's why I said probably getting one with that you can do straps is going to be better but then again it's not necessarily going to have the same kind of U values that this can achieve you see my expanding foam tape it has expanded but where the mortar joints are where it's been pointed obviously it slightly dips in and i've only got this tape only expands out to 12 mil so it hasn't quite filled that so i'm gonna have to cap it off with a uh, trim whereas on the french doors i've used the 3 to 18 mil and it has got into the actual uh, point in there but i'm not sure i like the look of the expanding foam around the outside so i'm probably going to get some aluminium flat bar like this this is black this is for my glazing bars you stick on the outside and then I'm going to butt it up against the edge so it'll go like that and then I'll just put a little bit of silicon where it dips but I think I prefer that time to get these back in um, you can't really get it wrong on this because when they install these actual hinges uh, they drill well they should drill this one first and this one and then because they're slotted then they can adjust them and then they put that one in so it's fixed at that point so when you actually put the window back up if you put that one in first you can't go wrong it can't reposition the hinges or anything and these should be in the right place the only reason why i took them out is because the hinge sits across here and that's where i had to fix the actual seal same up the top as well to get that fixing in and when you're doing no, this one or this one uh, the sash was in the way or at least the um, the locking wedges were. You're gonna have to make a decision whether you need to take your sashes out. You don't necessarily have to. On this occasion, I did, 
uh, when I done my plastic windows before the UPVC ones, uh, I done a loft conversion, so that was timber frame up top, so I could get a fix in somewhere else, and it didn't really matter. Uh, that could go in the centre, and then down below, it was an old 1950s bungalow, so it had a solid nine-inch brick wall, so I, I had no issues with like fixing into a cavity or not. Oh fuck! Where's my screws? Oh no, the wind's blown them off. worth mentioning if you're doing something like this make sure you just do it by hand because these screws uh, they're f self threaded self tapped into the actual aluminium so if you over tighten it will just strip that because it's just too soft uh, these are the screws that they've been using they uh, they're self drilling as well as self tapping up there the uh, fabricators have obviously reached into a pot and they ended up putting that screw in which is the wrong screw, in essence. Um, and that, I don't know, obviously they wasn't really paying attention. It, it worked, but I don't really like the look of that one. <laughs> I'm gonna use my ones. That is stainless steel, it's pretty much similar. It hasn't got the self-drilling bit on, but it does look like they're galvanized, whereas mine are stainless steel. Obviously getting stainless steel screws like this probably cost absolute bank, but I wonder how long how long would that take to rust do you reckon probably forever zinc coated don't know so we close these up and we can get the glass in uh it's a little bit of a struggle to close this one it's just literally you see the rubber gasket around the edge it's just obviously that gives you a better airtight seal uh, these have been tested for air tightness they, you know the certification thing that they do and this one look it closes lovely lovely that's, <laughs> that's how it should work <laughs> i'm just going to take the beads out for this particular one uh the sides going first and then the bottom and the top so you obviously reverse order they put these in just to keep them in and then they just unclip like this and i'm going to go and place them down there so they're all in order it's probably worth mentioning this bottom bead here was a little bit more difficult to get out the reason why that is is there's a little screw that protrudes just there there's one on that side but it's a little bit lower so that wasn't a problem this uh, is because of the locking mechani mechanism how it's screwed in at the bottom um, so that just means obviously they've drilled through that a little bit it's hard to get this in and out now I noticed on the other one that I've already done because that's right on the edge anyway the back edge had kind of like it was missing and then that was the way that I could get it in and out so on this particular one I'm just going to take that out a little bit and then that makes it easier to get the bead in and out for the remaining beads these two that it's kept in by the handle so you need to take the hands off first obviously it's locked at the moment Do the bottom one first. <laughs> okay, these beads there they're cut out for the lock, which makes it difficult to get out because these are clipped in and then obviously you can't easily flex it back. So it's a bit of a bitch. But if you just get your hands like that, you can roll it out just like that. And it's even more difficult to get it back in once the glass is there because all the beads are actually cut and they need to stay in the right place so I lay them out like this on a nice blanket so they're not going to get mixed up it's heel and toe time I've got specific packers that I need to use for doing that this is obviously on the recommendation from the manufacturer these are manufactured by them as well I assume uh, they got supplied with the windows from the fabricators uh, for this I did have access to the fabricators manual before um, before they removed, before the manufacturer removed it off their website. So I know exactly how to do this. On this, their particular one, they say right on the bottom when you butt it up and then this side one, you space it up by 30 mil. And it's the same on, on the opposite corner. I'll show you all that in a minute. I like to get these in place with some Tessa tape. This is double-sided special stuff. Uh, it's really thin. So I stick them on first 
then I'll go around so I need to put in the security packers these are my own packers that I purchased uh, triple glazing ones they're hard to find there is a company that do sell them you need to buy a thousand though if you're interested in that ask me um, and then in between that I need to put in the uh, thermal enhancement tape so I'll do that now and then I'll show you afterwards okay so it's all packed up <clears throat> just to show you uh, so this is the hinge side so you need to which side is the heel which side is the toe I don't know one's toe one's heel well, I have no idea so they're the manufacturers packers and then obviously I've got the thermal installation in between and then for security to for the past 24 um, whatever it is test you need opposite packers in the opposite corners up there and up there and then you also need packers behind where the locking mechanism is so where the cam keep is so that's why that packer I've extended it up there so from the corner up there and obviously the lock over there I've put that one there uh, and these you need to pack them out once you get a glass in so they're one mil off of the glass and that just stops someone like obviously getting a crowbar and trying to lever this either which way it just won't go anywhere because of the glass basically so it makes sure that your frame can't flex now I need to get my actual glass in but I can't leave these in because it's too tight so I put them in for the time being but I've learned uh, the best way to probably do it is I'm going to take this one out and take them two corner ones out up there and then I leave this bottom one in and then I can get the actual glass in because it's difficult to lift up the glass to get this one in afterwards so but you can get these side ones in easy and then the top one is a little bit more difficult but it's fine the glass gets tight up against this um, obviously I need to pack these out more they end up being about three mil I've got three mil packers but I only put one mil in so it's easier for me to get the glass in otherwise it's just more difficult if you understand I have to lift the glass in at an angle to miss miss the lock there so it goes in like that and then I need to squeeze it in I've got my sucker this weighs like 14 kilograms and there's a sticker there it says glaze with this side facing out so make sure you put it in the right way It is rather tight. This, this particular company, they they do their glass like bang on, like with their manufacturer's packers. You just there's no wiggle room. It is really difficult, especially with the uh, you know the duct tape around the outside, around the corners. You'll see the tape's probably like doubled over which makes it even more difficult see without the thermal enhancement this would, would have just popped in easy this way you need one of these plastic paddles Well, I'm just going to open this window and then I'll go on the outside just so I can get that corner over. So now I can pop this one in easy. This one should go, yeah, let's see. That slides okay. And this side one kind of goes in all right as well. Right, the top one's hard. Now if you had a UPVC frame, um, it flexes easier and the, and the way that you do it, you get one of these paddles, you come to the bottom here, you push that up and then that lifts the top and then you can get that in the top. With the aluminium windows, I don't know whether it's just because it's aluminium or because it's a small win window, that doesn't really work. It doesn't flex. so. What we're going to do, we're going to close this and we're going to get this off. Okay, I'm almost there, I need my little hammer. 
you'll need to get one of these. This is a, a 4X710, 32 mil. It's like rubber at one end and then it's plastic at the other. And you use this when you're putting in the beads on plastic windows, not necessarily for uh, aluminium, but I do actually have to use it. I'm just gonna tap this in. It was just that corner where the tape had doubled over, it wouldn't go in. Didn't smash it. Okay, bead time. This is really handy. I've got two of these. These are the cheap Chinese ones. And you see that red mark there, you just pump it. It sucks itself on and then it's secure. And then obviously to get it off, you need to get it out. Get the right bead for the right side. Give it a wipe down, make sure there's no aluminium filings because they've obviously cut that off. It might get down the actual bit that it goes in. Now this one's really difficult just on the basis you can't get it in properly because of that lock. So you're going to get it almost there. Okay, that's as tight as we can possibly go. And this is the nerve wracking bit. Just give it a tap with the hammer. And then it will lock in at the back. I'll show you a bit more up close on one of the smaller ones, but you can see on this one. It just goes in easier. It should do at least anyway. There we go. Just to make it easier to get this bottom bead in, if you just pull these out and pack it, that will line up these beads on the side and then that will make sure it can get in easy. If you look at the way this is profiled, that hooks in first and then it hooks in at the back on this bit. So it's easier obviously when you can get it on an angle. So you can drop it in there and then click it back. And it's done. Gasket time. Now this is really, really supple, this particular one, and it's almost got like a, kind of like a releasing agent on it, if you like. So for this particular application, you don't need to lube it up or anything. Plastic windows, uh, when you do the beads on them, the gasket is with the actual plastic normally that is an absolute chore to get it in. You need to proper whack it with a hammer or you get a bit of wood and like whack it in. And you also need to get someone to actually push on the glass normally. This is really, really bloody simple. We're just gonna cut, I'll cut the bottom first, then I'll do the two sides and then I do the top. And I like to cut it a little tiny bit of an angle where I need to. This will be useful for you as well. Bearing in mind, obviously, I got these windows. I read through the technical manuals and it said when you put these beads on, you should be putting a bit of silicon in the middle at the top 100 mil down and at the bottom 100 mil down, just on the sides. Now, I can see why you would do that if you had externally beaded windows. But I don't see the point in why you would do it on the inside. So I haven't been doing it on the inside. Talking about this kind of thing, the fabricator, they've got an installation guide on their website. The manufacturer, I spoke to them the other day because they pulled their technical manuals and they gave me a different installation manual. And in the technical manual at the back, they had a different installation manual again. So there's three different bloody ways that you can fit this. <laughs> They're all very similar. Neither the uh, 
fabricators one or the installation guide from the manufacturer they've they haven't got the silicon bit but the technical manual has which is a bit puzzling they was going to sell me my other windows there was a couple that were externally beaded and i said can i not have them internally beaded and they said oh yeah you can do that apparently the whole security thing with externally beaded windows these days it's not an issue but i'd rather not take the risk so with the gasket i can push it in like that and it spreads can you see that so that's the way i'm going to need to go in if you leave these packers in it's easier to get it started you don't need to well i found that you should probably take them out so i'm just going to push here and then that will get it slid in I need to cut my nails <laughs> and then you need to leave it in, in the technical manual it said one to two percent over that's, I think I think that's not enough really because when you push it up it stretches I'm going to go, say there. Now that looks like too much, but it will stretch in. Okay, that isn't fully in just yet, but that's enough just to hold it there. Now I'll do the sides, obviously make it longer pack it in I'll do the top and then I'll show you what you do after now you could assume that that's it which I thought initially but then because I had a little bit of an issue with one bit I was messing about with it and then I realized that you actually you need to push this in more so that's what it looks like at the moment and then you have to push it down more and then that's what locks it in so it ends up almost with like a tiny ridge in here so that's what's actually putting the force between the glass and this back edge to clip it in guess what i forgot to do <laughs> oh my god i forgot to put the additional um packers around the edge the green ones for the security Right, I'm going to whack this out and start again and I'll, I'll, I'll see you at the end when I'm finished. Let that be a warning to you though, I just got them beads off within like two minutes. So I could easily, someone could easily get your beads off, take the glass out and then they're in your house. That's if you've got externally beaded glazing, which is what you don't want basically. I'm still not bloody done. <laughs> this window, this particular one has been an absolute pain in the ass like you wouldn't believe i think what happens it's obviously the glass is made up of three individual planes of glass the back or the outside one that was ever so slightly oversized i think so i couldn't get the uh the manufacturer's packers in on the sides that's about five mil thick so i had to use my own ones and go in at four or even free just to get it in otherwise it wasn't going to go i've done it everything and then i went to put the handle on and it won't work and the reason why that is obviously it was hitting the actual thing at the back and the glass so it turns out this bit here is about three mil too long it's just been cut on the wonk obviously the fabricators i got this from they didn't do the handles this is the actual handle manufacturer that has messed up this one so I'm going to angle grind that off and then I can get that in. Just imagine though, all of this just faffing. Like when I forgot the security packers, like I guarantee you if it was a general builder or a window fitter, they would just left that, not bothered. But I'm not like that, am I? I want to do everything properly. Ta-da! Let's say you fit a window. I still need to fit the glazing bars on these, on the outside and the inside, but I'm not going to do that because I want to finish the place before I stick anything on the windows. It'll make it easier to clean. 
If you haven't already, give us a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to hit the bell notification. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.